To begin the repair process for a model 375 in inch and a quarter to two inch sizes, first close the inlet and outlet shutoff valves. Open the number two, number three, and number four test cocks to release the pressure from the valve. Unscrew the four bolts that hold down the black check housing. Insert a flathead screwdriver under the tabs where the bolts were and pry upward to loosen the housing. Next, you will lift the housing out of the bronze body. Twist the sleeve at the end of the body and then pull to remove from the body. Remove the checks from the housing by pushing on the check visible at the small end of the housing using your thumb or the handle of a small screwdriver. Caution, the checks are spring-loaded. The number one check uses a stronger spring. Untwist the seat from the spring retainer in a counterclockwise direction. Inspect the rubber on the poppet for cuts or debris. Inspect the sharp edge of the seat with your finger for any damage. If the seat is damaged, replace the entire check assembly. To remove a damaged seal ring, remove the screw and retaining washer. For a temporary fix, you can flip the seal ring over to use the smooth side while waiting for your new replacement parts. Repeat this process with the second check assembly. Make sure to put the stronger spring in the number one check assembly. Now you will place your new O-rings on the seats of each check assembly and the sleeve if needed, and lubricate these O-rings. Wipe clean and inspect the inside of the housing. Place the sleeve on a flat surface with the bolt tab hanging off the edge. Stack the number one check and then the number two check on the top of the sleeve. Make sure to line up the notches in the number two check with the number one spring retainer. Place the housing onto the checks and the sleeve. Push down on the housing with a rocking motion to seat all of the O-rings into the housing. Clean the O-rings at the ends of the housing and replace if necessary. Insert the two O-rings into the grooves in the housing. Lubricate the face of the housing O-rings. Make sure you have the housing facing the correct flow direction and place it down into the body. Push down with a rocking motion until the housing is down flush against the bronze body. As you push down on the housing, be careful that the O-rings do not extrude out of their grooves or become pinched by the upper edge of the body. After the housing is seated properly, insert the four bolts. Do not over tighten these bolts. Before servicing the relief valve, make sure to check the troubleshooting section of the instructions. The most common cause of discharge from the relief valve is debris in the number one check valve. Next, you will unscrew the three bolts on the bottom of the relief valve cover counterclockwise. Pull down and wiggle relief valve assembly to remove it from the housing. Be careful not to lose the large or small O-rings that might stick to the bottom of the check housing or the relief valve assembly. The relief valve seal ring is installed in the bottom of the check housing. Inspect the seal ring for any cuts or embedded debris. If damaged, use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw and the seal retainer. For a temporary seal ring fix, you can flip the seal ring over to use the smooth side while waiting for new replacement parts. The seat is showing through the top hole in the relief valve assembly. You will inspect the sharp edge of the seat with your finger for any damage. To disassemble the relief valve assembly, remove the four bolts that hold the two halves together. Pull the relief valve cover and flange apart. Make sure you do not lose the large and small O-ring between the diaphragm and cover as you open the assembly. Next, you will gently pull the cartridge from the relief valve cover. Inspect the diaphragm closely for wear or holes. Inspect the O-ring and surface on the plunger for any cuts. To replace the diaphragm, carefully disassemble the spring-loaded cartridge assembly. Be careful not to damage the seat edge or the O-ring surface of the plunger. Hold the hex on the plunger with a large wrench. Use large channel locks to grasp the edge of the seat and unscrew the seat counterclockwise. Once started, use the palm of your hand on the seat and turn the plunger with your other hand, keeping a tight hold to prevent parts flying as the spring pops them apart. 
To reassemble, place the seat face down in the palm of your hand with new diaphragm around the threads. Place seat guide into seat, cross first and round end toward the spring. Place the spring in the plunger. Push plunger and spring into seat and compress spring and thread the two together. Tighten the seat into the plunger with wrenches so the two parts seal against the diaphragm. Clean and inspect the bore in the cover. Lubricate the o-ring on the plunger. Place the large and small o-ring into the grooves in the cover. No lubrication is required. Place the cartridge assembly into the cover. You will center the flange on the diaphragm and line up the bolt holes with the cover. Next, you will drop the four bolts into the cover. Push down on the seat of the cartridge with a thumb until it bottoms in the cover to align the diaphragm holes. Then tighten two opposite bolts. Release the seat and tighten the two remaining bolts. Clean and lubricate the bottom of the check housing where the relief valve assembly o-ring seals. Lubricate the o-ring and place onto the bottom of the check housing. You will place the small o-ring into the little groove between the two bolt holes on the top of the relief valve assembly. Push the relief valve assembly onto the check housing with a rocking motion to seat the o-ring. Place the three remaining bolts into their holes and tighten the relief valve assembly in place. Your valve should be tested by trained personnel to confirm that it is working properly. You will now close the test cocks. Open your number one ball valve slowly to pressurize the valve and inspect for any leaks. Open the number two ball valve a small amount and wait for the system to pressurize. Fully open your ball valves once the system is pressurized.